I was just a child when the stars fell from the skies. But I remember how they built a cannon to destroy them. And in turn, how that cannon brought war upon us. War was an abstract idea, nothing more than a show on TV. As a child, I only saw it as something that happened in some faraway land. Until that final day of summer. One day while on my way to school, I looked up in the skies. A sound like distant thunder. In the blue skies far above me, contrails drew dizzying circles around in a crazy waltz. A battle in the beautiful skies far away. I could not tear my gaze away from them. swiftly into the sky. One fleeing plane fell out of the skies, spiraling and spewing orange flames to crash by the cape. The same cape where my family lived. Now they only live in my memories of days past. The victor circled around to confirm the kill. And on his craft, there was a large number 13 emblazoned in yellow. I will never forget this. The Allies retreated across the ocean before the onslaught of the enemy. Our little town in the heart of the mainland fell into deep isolation. Four years after the planet fall of the Ulysses 1994 XF04 asteroids, Stonehenge, the erosion weapon of mass destruction, was originally built to shoot down asteroids. Upon discovering its potential as an anti-aircraft weapon, the erosions ruled the skies over the mainland. The ISAF's attempts to destroy Stonehenge through airstrikes failed. As a result, strategic positions on the mainland were lost. This in turn forced ISAF to evacuate from the east coast to North Point. ISAF GHQ is regrouping its remaining combat forces at North Point. However, the erosions control most parts of the mainland, and they have forward deployed bombers to Wrigley Air Base, a former ISAF facility. This bomber force will attempt to deal a lethal blow to the ISAF at North Point from this strategic position. Here is the current SID rep and your orders for deployment, effective immediately. Enemy agents destroyed our early warning radar network, allowing several air bombers to penetrate our airspace. In 15 minutes, we expect this bomber formation to strike Allen Ford Air Base and then move on to targets at North Point. Our air defense forces are extremely weak at this point in time, hence our GHQ is a sitting duck. It is mission critical that you destroy the bombers and neutralize the threat before they get past Newfield Island. Remember, you are the first line of defense for North Point, and the fate of ISAF lies in your hands. Thanks to your efforts, the enemy bomber strike was averted. However, our victory will be meaningless should you fail the next mission.
The war seemed to unfold in the blink of an eye. I don't remember exactly when the forces from the west occupied my town. I was too busy scanning the skies day after day, waiting for Yellow 13 to reappear. Before I knew it, everything changed. The language they taught us at school. Our friendly local sheriff disappeared and was replaced by foreign MPs. In the beginning, some people secretly tuned into broadcasts from North Point on their parabolic antennas. But as time passed, the broadcast no longer came in. Maybe the satellites were destroyed. All non-military computer networks were shut down. Gasoline was rationed to civilians. Though we lived in the 21st century, we were reduced to using crystal radios and horse-drawn carts. I moved in with my uncle in town, who used to be a taxi driver. Out of gasoline and out of work, my uncle did nothing but to drown himself in drink. I earned my keep by playing the harmonica in the town bar, the one thing I was good at. I'd play for sullen occupation soldiers in exchange for their charity and loose change, and use the money to support my uncle and myself. My uncle trash-talked the barkeep who catered to the enemy soldiers, but he never refused the money I brought home. As for myself, I had a crush on the barkeep's only daughter, who was a little older than me. Another day passed, yet still no sign of the fighter plane Yellow 13 in the skies above our town. The enemy held Wrigley Air Base is located in close proximity to our front lines, making it the proverbial knife at our throat. A large erosion bomber contingent was deployed to Wrigley. Their intentions are clear. A full-scale strike on our forces at North Point is imminent. Your mission is to catch these bombers on the ground and destroy them. We intend to turn the parking ramp at Wrigley into a junkyard. The attack was a success. A significant number of enemy bombers were eliminated, and a full-scale airstrike on North Point was averted. One night, a spirited group made their way to the bomber chased out the sullen army grunts and commandeered the place. Even I knew who they were. The patch on their sleeve was the mark of the proud Air Force. A loud-mouthed middle-aged man went around, announcing each pilot's results for the day and his running kill record. For those who exceeded five kills, a thorough toasting and soaking followed. I believe it was their custom to call a pilot an ace once he shot down five planes. After completing the day's review, the same guy, the squadron agent, went on to announce, and now, for our leader's results, everyone turned around to look at the quiet man who sat alone, strumming a guitar. I found myself drawn to the music from his guitar. Our yellow 13 bagged three more today, bringing his new tally up to 64 kills. With a tentative smile, the man with the guitar turned to me and asked me to accompany him on my harmonica. I brought it up to my lips and they started a new song. I had finally found him. But by some fluke, it was my father's favorite song, the one he used to play at the end of each day. The 
The Allied forces are retreating, and survivors are gathering at the northern port of St. Arc. However, the radar facilities atop Mount Shesna provide tactical support to the enemy. As a result, our evac mission is in jeopardy. If our troops can successfully evacuate and regroup at North Point, they will become a formidable force in future battles. Your mission is to destroy the radar facilities on Mount Shesna, thereby blinding the enemy and hiding our troop movements. With their radar out of commission, the enemy's command and control is degraded. The evac and regrouping efforts are proceeding as scheduled. We've discovered the Erusians are transporting a large quantity of strategic supplies and rapid deployment troops into Converth Harbor. Converth appears to be the staging area for an attack on North Point. The Acre Fleet stationed here seems to be the centerpiece of this strike. If the Erusians complete their troop preparations and the Acre Fleet set sail, this will bring about our defeat in this war. Your mission is to intercept and shoot down the enemy transport planes in and around Converth Harbor. Let's show them how vulnerable they are. Be advised, the transport aircraft have ECMs on board that emit powerful jamming signals. Rely on visual contact rather than radar. The mission was a success. This erosion air corridor has been effectively shut down. Converth Harbor, home of the Acre Fleet, is completely dependent on a single petrochemical complex for its fuel supply. The complex consists of a land-based oil refinery storage facility and an offshore oil drilling platform. Your mission is to go out and destroy, or at least damage, these sites. Our objective is to reduce production output of this complex to 20% or less. By cutting off the port's fuel supply, we will delay and disrupt the combat deployment of the Ager fleet. The enemy lost 5 million barrels of reserves and the ability to process 250,000 barrels of crude oil daily. The Ager fleet is effectively immobilized and no longer a threat. Unfortunately, our losses were high as well. We now rely on your skills more than ever to compensate for our losses. A freeway under construction in a wheat field outside of town. When they started construction, I remember how the mayor bragged about it even though it would completely bypass our town. The freeway became the occupation force's makeshift runway and the unfinished tunnels their bunkers. This was their base. They were the elite flight squadron chosen to protect the cannon. Ironically, the same cannon that was created to shoot down the asteroids became a catalyst to the war. But when the Allied attacks no longer came, the squadron was assigned long-range missions that took them to distant battlefields. I thought of the words I would use to confront him and bided my time. Although I harbored these feelings within me, I could never get close to him. His wingman was always by his side. Despite having a gentle demeanor, I could tell that the wingman would never allow danger to get near Yellow 13, even on land. The pillar of their group, 13 exuded an air of invincibility. He always chose to fly a five-plane formation. He was a man who prided himself not on his kill record, but on his record of never losing a squadron member. It's difficult for me to describe just how good Yellow 13's flying was, but I witnessed it once from the ground. The lead plane with the five-plane formation should have turned the same arc with the same timing as the others. 
yet only his plane drew sharp contrails. His heart felt compassion towards the weaker enemies he downed. Someday, if an equal appeared and challenged the limits of his skills in a fight, he would bear no resentment about being shot down. He said this himself. And so as time passed, I found the goodness of a home in their company. Leaving them was no longer an option for me now. We will launch a surprise attack on the Acre Fleet while it lies immobilized at Converth Harbor. This large-scale airstrike will be the largest and the most strategic operation since the transfer of HQ to North Point. You may need to resupply along the way because this operation will be long in duration. Remember, it is imperative that you complete the mission objective and return to base safely. The Erosion's so-called Invincible Fleet has been destroyed. Their plans for invading North Point have been delayed indefinitely. Although we are still far from triumphant, this victory gave our troops a much-needed boost in morale. Your next mission is to attack the solar power generator plants in the Faith Park region. These generators equal nuclear ones in output and provide about 60% of the energy for the Erosion's military industrial complexes. Since they do not require oil or uranium supplies, we cannot stop power production by interdicting their supply lines. This deep strike mission will not only cripple the Erosion's industrial output, but also divert attention from our own imminent invasion plans. The mission succeeded, but the combat losses due to Stonehenge were higher than expected. Victory will elude us until it is eliminated. At some point I realized my uncle, my would-be guardian, had vanished. Maybe the secret police dragged him off for some drunken comment he made. Maybe he chose to disappear. I didn't have anyone to turn to, so I found myself living as if I were a member of the Yellow Squadron. Everybody in town scorned the barkeep for doing business with the enemy. In reality, he and his family were members of the resistance, gathering up intelligence information from enemy customers. His daughter protected me, but that was only because of my tender age. The barkeep and his family were the real heroes, while I, on the other hand, found a haven among the enemy. A recon satellite will be launched from the Kimura Islands rocket base to support our mainland operations. The Erosions responded by deploying a large number of their air superiority fighters to prevent the launch. A large-scale air battle is expected. We must win this battle to maintain our air superiority. We've only got one window of opportunity for this launch. Shoot down as many fighters as possible to preserve top cover over the rocket base. The rocket launch proceeded smoothly and all systems are go. Preparations for providing our troops with vital tactical data is now complete. It won't be long now. It won't be long till it begins. The barkeep's daughter confided to me. 
As a member of the resistance, she eagerly awaited the Allied counterattack on the mainland. What will happen to these people when the Allies come? I asked, to which she frowned. We'll run them out. This is our town. But I knew she didn't mean that from the bottom of her heart. Thirteen had captured her heart. I knew this from the way she shot jealous glances at his wingmen. As other pilots rotated out of Yellow Squadron, Yellow Four, Thirteen's wingman, always stuck by his side, even on land. The only female pilot in the squadron, she had Yellow Thirteen's absolute trust as his wingman. Yellow Thirteen seemed oblivious to all this, and instead reviewed the promising enemy pilot's performance from yesterday's skirmish. He's so close. If he manages to stay alive for just a while longer, that pilot could be a worthy opponent. But when there were no such enemies to look forward to, Thirteen's eyes were sad. The troops are regrouped and ready to reclaim lost territory from the erosions in the amphibious Operation Bunker Shot. The plan requires our forces to follow an extremely narrow and vulnerable path from the landing site to the inland objective. This path allows the enemy to concentrate their fire and provides them with a distinct advantage. However, this route lies out of Stonehenge's effective range. Your mission is to reduce troop casualties at the beach landing sites. A beachhead was established through fierce fighting at each of the landing sites. But this is only the first step towards regaining the mainland. The Tango Line is a vital line of defense for the erosion forces on the eastern mainland. Ista's Fortress is a strategic foothold on that line. It utilizes unique terrain features that make it virtually impregnable. Support our troops by attacking and neutralizing the combat power of Vista's Fortress. Be forewarned, this will put you within range of Stonehenge. However, your skills should prove to be more than a match for it. Vista's Fortress was destroyed. The troops broke through the Tango Line and are now in control of Los Canas. A new field HQ was established in order to spearhead a deeper invasion into the mainland, as well as to attack Stonehenge. Two civilian aircraft flying through the hills region northwest of Los Canas are under threat of attack by erosion fighters. On board are the engineers responsible for Stonehenge, as well as their families. They are offering information in exchange for amnesty and permission to defect to an ISAF member state. One of the aircraft is flying at an extremely low altitude due to some unknown problem. Your mission is to protect both aircraft from enemy fighters. Make sure they exit the combat area safely. All passengers and crew from both aircraft were examined by an ISAF medical officer and are in good health. Several states are coming forward with offers of amnesty to the defectors and their families. Bombs were delivered to their base. This meant that an enemy who had to be fought by those means was close at hand. The resistance blew up the squadron's runway. Yellow 4 suffered light shrapnel wounds. Though the runway could be fixed, the complete loss of reserve supplies was a heavy blow. Logistics support became infrequent following the Allied operations. I knew this because Yellow Squadron's crew chief bellyached about this all the time to me. I won't complain if I buy the farm while I'm airborne, but I can't stand being taken out while I'm grounded. Now I understand 13's feelings. Reports of the Stonehenge air raid came in. Yellow Four With no bombs, her plane was light. But her plane was in bad shape. It needed an engine replacement badly. We will attack Stonehenge, the lethal weapon that has plagued ISAF for so long. Since it was designed to shoot down asteroids, a few small fighters flying unpredictable high-speed courses should be able to get within range. 
According to the defectors, its central ECM jamming system disrupts our radar and missile guidance systems. Unless this system is destroyed, our mission will be very difficult to execute. HQ predicts a 40% casualty rate for all deployed aircraft. It'll be a tough mission, but one we can't avoid. Now go and reclaim the skies over the mainland. Dismissed. a turning point and hope this victory will bring about a quick end to the war. Though he lost four, Thirteen never openly showed his sorrow. But I found out. He was alone, quietly gazing at the handkerchief Yellow Four left behind. When he felt my eyes upon him, he said, no matter what, she can't complain. She went up with her plane in disrepair. Pilots are responsible for their planes. He then went on and spoke of the time when they first met. He spoke of when she was just a girl, before he trained her, before she became a fighter pilot. His words weren't directed at me in particular. He was keeping a precious memory alive by speaking those words. The hint of perfume on her keepsake handkerchief. Yellow Squadron's pilot turnover ran high. The skilled ones went in to shore up other units while rookies with little airtime transferred in. Yellow 13 posted an allied paper faxed over by headquarters. It praised the pilot who destroyed Stonehenge. 13 said to everyone, Look, here's something worthy of praise. Even among the enemy there are men like this. Not all of them are despicable bastards who rob our wings through cowardly sabotage. I stared at the barkeep's daughter as she winced at those words. The Allies were coming to our town. A returning U-2 recon plane with engine trouble is currently passing through Nome Ravine due to its inability to climb to higher altitudes. However, airship-mounted noise jammers in the area are preventing the use of radar. At this rate, a crash is very likely. Destroy as many jammers in the valley as possible and get that recon plane safely home. Radar won't work, so you'll need to find the airships visually and destroy them with your machine guns. The recon plane brought back data on Megalith. This is the super weapon designed by the Erusions to replace Stonehenge. Analysis by the intelligent unit leads to the conclusion that victory hinges on ending this war before Megalith is deployed. With Stonehenge out of commission, the landing operations are underway in the northern part of the mainland. In response, the Erusions have launched large numbers of cruise missiles against the ISAF landing forces. Our radar is unable to pick up these missiles that fly at ultra-low altitudes. Failure to destroy these missiles will put our troops in danger. Your mission is to shoot and destroy each and every cruise missile. Good job. There was no unnecessary loss of landing troops, and the northern coast is now secure. As the Allies advanced, the retreating erosion forces from the east filled our town. The AA gun crew set up their positions atop the hospital, and Yellow 13 smoldered with quiet anger over their tactics. Nights were long, with the town's mandatory blackouts. The barkeep's daughter tried to plant laser transmitters for detonating explosives. She got caught.
It was Yellow 13. He knew she was responsible for planting the bomb on their runway as well. The face of the enemy whom he hated belonged to someone close to him. Get out of our town, you fascist pig. Those were the words from my mouth. I've never seen his face twist so painfully. Do you hate us that much? We couldn't shake or nod our heads in reply. It seemed like an eternity passed before he said go and released us. The next day there was no change in his attitude. As usual, he made his requests to the squadron crew chief. The poor fuel quality is affecting thrust. As soon as the Allied forces drew near, the resistance would end the blackouts over the city. San Salvation was a neutral city at the start of the war until the Erujans occupied it. We will now liberate this city. The heaviest resistance will come from the tank battalion near Route 7 in Old Town and the anti-tank helicopters near the new city government complex. In addition, you must defend our allies from any airstrikes that may originate from the airport behind you. The resistance fighters will end the blackout over the city. Suppress all enemy resistance and help liberate the city. The city has been liberated. The victory was not only a strategic one, but a symbolic one as well. Though it is still dark outside, cheering can be heard throughout the city. Singing. The town was free at last. During the night raids, the AA gunners had strafed the town in an attempt to shoot down low-flying aircraft. The town militia now rounded up these gunners. They retreated as well, and now their quarters stood empty. After what seemed like a long absence, Allied aircraft soared overhead. I wondered if the fateful enemy ace, the one that Yellow 13 longed to meet, was on the what would happen if they ever came face to face? I fell in with the routed erosions and followed after the squadron. Whiskey Corridor is a narrow strip of land between Lambert and Amber Mountains. The enemy has deployed a large tank force at the end of the corridor as its final line of defense. Despite being outnumbered, our allies must face this enemy contingent head-on in order to advance on the Arusian capital of Farbanti. Our projected casualty rate is extremely high. We need a miracle in air support to win this battle. Annihilate enemy ground forces and provide direct close air support to our troops. The enemy abandoned its defensive line, and the road to their capital lies open. The enemy GHQ is located beneath a landfill on the coast of their capital, Farbanti. Bring it under control to end this war once and for all. Our troops will enter via the Silver Bridge to the southeast and the flooded city to the south. You must attack all enemy forces and support our troops. Enemy tank forces are also closing in from the north. Destroy Johnson Memorial Bridge to stop them from joining forces from the enemy GHQ. We know that Megalith is being developed as we speak. The enemy must be prevented from using it as their last-ditch effort.
On September 19, Erujia accepted the ISAF terms for surrender. Our victory came at an extremely high cost in casualties. Yellow 13's body vanished into the blue skies, never to return to Earth. Only a single handkerchief fluttered down from the sky where he disappeared. The faint scent of perfume. The barkeep's daughter and I had followed the squadron this far. Each of us had our own thoughts as we buried that handkerchief. It no longer mattered to me whether that was 13 or 4's grave. Their memories blurred together as one and left the realm of reality like a dream. The terms of surrender were accepted that day and the war was over. A group of young Erujian officers have taken over Megalith, the super weapon that was under development. Megalith is a rocket launch facility that can shoot down asteroid fragments in orbit. The only way to destroy this highly dangerous and fortified facility is to hit it from the inside. Follow the missile port grooves to find the three generators deep within the facility. Destroy the generators to access the central heat vent. Once inside, destroy the giant missile in the central silo. An infiltration unit will secure your escape route. Their plan calls for waiting until the generators are offline, and then taking over the sub-control room once the blackout hits. Enter this rat's nest with full confidence that the unit will get you out again. It's highly likely that this will be your final mission. Remember, we need heroes after the war, too. Make it back in one piece. Dismissed. The once familiar scent of burning jet fuel has long since faded away. What was once Yellow Squadron's runway is now just a local highway again. I write this letter to you now. I know it must have brought him unexpected joy to have an opponent like you at the end of that meaningless war. At least that's what I want to believe. Only you, the pilot who shot him down, can confirm this. And so, I write to you.
back.